So welcome to Dynamic Foundry Group to small video section. Today we are going to see a small video on shrinkage cause and effect analysis. How shrinkage defect looks like. You can see a picture showing shrinkage defect. Reverse feeding due to thick ingot section causes ingot shrinkage. So you have to maintain your width of ingot properly to avoid reverse feeding of the metal to avoid this ingot shrinkage. Depression due to less radius at the corner. You have to maintain proper radius at the junction to avoid such type of depression in the casting. Here you can see some photos regarding shrinkage defect. This picture shows Microporosity, which causes leakage of the casting. So, microporosity is another type of shrinkage which happens in the casting. So, to avoid leakage, we have to control microporosity in the casting. Such kind of microporosity inside the bore of the casting or ID of the bore can also cause you a shrinkage defect or leakages in this picture you are again seeing some microstructures related things with porosity and shrinkage defect this is a typical shrinkage porosity in gray cast iron What shrinkage defect is actually? While the material is changing from liquid to solid, contraction takes place at various rate, varying rates, which causes irregularly shaped shrinkage cavities or depressions. A shrinkage defect is generally an uneven hole or spongy area lined with fern like crystal called dendrites. So, this is the definition of shrinkage. This is a conventional fishbone diagram for the shrinkage with 4M, that is method, material, man, and machine. In the method, mold wall movement, improper gating system, material, raw material issues, unsuitable composition, high pouring temperature. In main, pouring at low temperature, improper pouring, and training awareness. Machine, low mold hardness, low squeeze type, belt analysis. So this is a general fishbone diagram for the shrinkage defect. Now we are going to see possible root causes for the shrinkage defect as per process wise or, or section wise. First we are going to see a design. In design what are the reasons for the or what are the root causes, possible root causes for the shrinkage. Number one is improper metal solidification trend. Adrupt changes in the section thickness of the casting can cause you a defect of shrinkage. Isolated heavy section which cannot be fed will also cause you shrinkage defect. So these are basically a design prone causes for the shrinkage. In melting, high or low carbon equivalent, oxidized metal or holding of metal, metal composition that is high percentage of phosphorus in cast iron melt, high percentage of residual magnesium in a giant, low or high percentage of carbon and silicon, high percentage of pig iron used in the charge mix, high percentage of mild steel used in the charge mix can cause you shrinkage defect. In methaning, premature freezing of riser in proper metal distribution, riser location away from heavy section or casting. Section variation, improper radius, thin section away from feeding point, ingate location and size, that is height and width, specifically height of the ingate can cause you ingate shrinkage as we have seen the picture earlier. Pouring time, too high or too low, too small fillets, sharp internal corners, riser size too less, improper alignment of riser and screw well, 
in proper calculation of riser, ingate, feeder, etc. Low sand to volume measure ratio. In pouring, high inoculation, too high or too low temperature in proper inoculation. Repouring not done. Insufficient pouring of metal. Filter not removed from the sleeves. So these are the basically possible causes for the shrinkage defect. Now we are going to see some important tips and guidelines to overcome this shrinkage defect. You can use terulium paint to start the saltification as early to shift the shrinkage location. Use of Densner or Chaplet to shift the shrinkage location is another way. Use of external chill to shift the low shrinkage from heavy section. You can see some of the pictures here. You can see terulium paint being used to shift the shrinkage defect from one area to another area. You can see here in this picture, external cheese are applied on the casting surface so that shrinkage defect can be shifted to other area. You can see the mold photo with the chill, external chills. Densner used. Here you can see densners are used for the uh, starting of the solidification early. Use of densner for the directional solidification. You can see a picture of mold using the densner. Chaplets also helps you in starting the solidification early and to shift the shrinkage defect from one area to another area. Use of chaplet working for the directional solidification. Some important tips and guidelines to overcome shrinkage defect. These external chills, densner, chaplets, or terulium paint, whatever you are using, does not remove or eliminate shrinkage totally, but just shift it from one area to another area. So if you want to eliminate the shrinkage totally, one has to feed metal in that area. So it's very important to remember that these solutions are temporary solutions. This solution will just shift the shrinkage from one area to another area. It will not eliminate the shrinkage defect. So if you want to eliminate the shrinkage defect, you have to feed the metal in that particular area. So ways to feed the metal to remove shrinkage. Now we're going to see some of the ways to remove shrinkage defect by proper feeding of metal. One can use sand riser, exothermic sleeves, insulating sleeves, blind sleeves, high density sleeves, neck down sleeves for effective feeding. Sand riser can be used for gray cast iron feeding. Normally sand risers are used for the gray cast iron feeding as we all know. Insulating sleeves are used mainly in ductile iron casting where feeding requirements are more. Exothermic sleeves are more powerful and keep metal hotter. Hence are used to replace insulating sleeve where more feeding requirement is there. You can see here sand riser provided for the feeding of gray cast iron. Uh, it's very important to give that particular notch at the top of the riser to start the feeding in the sand riser. Most of the time, this notch is missing, which this riser, this notch in the riser is missing and which causes improper feeding of metal or improper inefficient feeding of metal. Neck down sleeves are usually when feeding is required on the casting body. HD sleeves are also useful where feeding is required, but with some riser or with regular sleeves, it is not possible to feed the metal at that particular point. Blind sleeves are also used to replace the sand risers to keep metal hotter more time and to improve feeding efficiency. You can see some of the pictures here, exothermic sleeve or insulating sleeve with proper base to keep that sleeve. You can see in the other picture, HD sleeve that is high density sleeve is put in put on the casting with a couple of blind sleeves. So blind sleeves are there to replace uh, sand risers to give more efficient feeding. HD sleeve is uh, normally used where you cannot use sand risers or exothermic or insulative sleeves. So it is most of the time it is being used on the casting body. It's important to know some tips for using HD sleeve like well-squeezed neck in high-density sleeve for effective feeding. 
So the neck is very important in high density sleeve. It has to be properly squeezed so that uh, your efficiency of sleeve can be used effectively. So it's very important. You can see in the picture, uh, sleeve number one, the neck of the sleeve is properly squeezed. Second is not properly squeezed neck. So it will not give a efficient feeding to the casting. Uh, when you use SD sleeve, you have to put some uh, kind of uh, pin to insert the sleeve. It's very important that the pin should be perpendicular to the casting surface. If it is not perpendicular, then your squeezing of neck will not be proper and your feeding will not be effective. So it's very important point to take care that your pin is always perpendicular and remain perpendicular during the handling of pattern, handling of boxes, handling of mold, and you have to make it as a checkpoint in your daily routine. Neck down sleeve for feeding metal on the casting body. Yeah, it is very important that uh, neck down sleeve is used most of the time on the casting body because uh, you are not able to feed at that particular uh, area or, or, or that particular point of the casting with the insulating sleeve or exothermic sleeve or with the sand riser. So that neck down sleeve you can put with the breaker core uh, so that it can be easily notched out. And you can see the effectively uh, used neck down sleeve in this picture. Proper selection of sleeve. It is very important to select right size of sleeves depending on the metal requirement for the feeding. It is necessary to provide enough volume of metal for the feeding the thick section. So it's very important that you have to calculate the volume required for that particular casting at that particular point and then you have to select a right size of sleeve for that particular section so that you can provide enough volume of the metal for feeding that section. Right location of feeder. So location is also important. Uh, it is important to select right location for the feeder sleeve so that directional solidification starts from the point to avoid the shrinkage. Normally feeders are attached to the thick section so that the solidification in at uh, starts at thin section and the metal flow continues from the thin section to thick section where which solidifies last is having buffer stock of metal in the feeder. So you have to give your riser or your feeder or your sleeve to the thicker section so that the metal solidification starts from your thin section and at the end when uh, the metal solidification uh, ends you can have uh, enough volume in the your sleeve or your feeder or in the riser to feed that particular requirement of metal. Uh, remove foam filter from the insulating or exothermic sleeves for better feeding efficiency. Efficiency is very important that you have to remove the filter foam filter before uh, after the pouring so that the efficiency of feeder can be maintained. Uh, additional hot top powder or a hot top compound can be used on the sleeve metal surface which will give you an improved feeding efficiency. It's very important that you can use this kind of uh, hot compound powder on the sleeve to improve the efficiency of metal feeding. You can see in the picture a person putting a small amount of hot top powder on the uh, metal surface in the sleeve after the pouring after the removal of filter this is very important after the removal of filter you have to add this uh, special inoculant special inoculant also help in removing micro porosity and helps in reducing shrinkage tendency in the casting however first solution to eliminate shrinkage is a proper method so inoculant is another additional way you can uh, specially look for the removing micro porosity, not bigger shrinkage. If the shrinkage uh, levels are very low, it is like a micro porosity and small uh, leakages or something like that, then you can try out this special inoculant. But the first preference to avoid shrinkage should be with proper methoding, with giving you giving a proper uh, sleeves of proper feeding of metal to that particular section. Such special inoculants are having special elements like cerium in ductile ions, strontium for cast iron, zirconium, which helps in faster solidification as well. 
some special nodalizer can be used also in the case of ductile iron to reduce shrinkage tendency. A special nodalizer with lanthanum can be added with magnesium alloy, which will give you good result in heavy sections, about 50 mm thick section, particularly ductile iron casting to reduce shrinkage tendency. This is not suitable for thin wall casting in ductile iron. So this is another way you can use lanthanum based magnesium to reduce the shrinkage tendency. But again, I would like to say that these inoculants or nodalizers are just uh, additional way of reducing microporosity. It is not a permanent solution. You have to work on your methoding, your charge mix, your chemical composition to get better feeding efficiency in the casting. Reconditioners are also used sometimes to reduce the shrinkage tendency of the metal. Sometimes preconditioner in the form of ferrosilicon base or calcium carb carbide base can be used or late addition of pig iron or late addition of plain inoculants can help you in reducing microporosity by providing additional nucleation to fill up these micro cavities in the metal. But again, it is an additional thing you can add after doing full fridge, your methering. Reporting will also help you to maintain pressure head and enough metal for efficient feeding. On my left, you can see a picture where you can see uh, metal is well drained in the sleeve and you can see a lot of uh, draining of the metal, you can repour such sleeves or such uh, feeders again to give efficient uh, metal stock for the feeding. In the, in the right picture, you can say same feeder is refeed again so that the proper or efficient metal feeding can be available for the casting. Periodic riser cut section to verify the shrinkage cavities inside the sand riser and sleeve. It will help you to know the efficiency of your feeders, efficiency of your sleeves that you have provided and you can get some trend out of it, how to how the sleeves are working, how your feeders are working, whether they are effective or not, and it will help you to reduce certain, uh, this, uh, certain problems arising in between. So, you can avoid some issues coming in between by cutting these risers or feeders periodically to get a proper train. Uh, this picture is showing how much sleeve can shrink after effective utilization. You can see in the picture on my left, you can see almost 50% of sleeve is drained out. So here you need to repour, as I told you earlier, you have to read need repouring of uh, metal, but it's uh, good that the sleeves are drained. It means it are, those, those, are, those sleeves are working or those feeders are working properly, efficiently, effectively for the feeding. On my left, you can see a feeder cut down, uh, almost totally drained out. It is not recommended because it will give you uh, casting, uh, maybe casting at defect because the oh, totally drained out riser may be a problem for you. So try to avoid such uh, heavy drain out feeders. It means your feeders are insufficient. You have to increase the volume of the feeder. That is why I told you it is very important to calculate the volume of your feeder first or volume of your metal requirement first so that you can select right size of feeder in that particular section. So this is from my side. Thank you very much for patient hearing and you hope you enjoyed this uh, video. Thank you.